Welcome back to Firefly Studios. My name is Katia, and today we are going to continue with the Unity C Sharp Fundamentals. Today we are going to cover loops. So I went ahead and set up our project from before. I added in some ground and a background. We've got a couple spawn points. And that's what all of these are. And we'll jump straight into it. So in our loop, I have already set up two variables. I've got a public game object thing to spawn. This is just what we're going to spawn. We're going to use spawning to illustrate how loops work. And then I've got a transform, which is where we want to spawn. And then I've got inside this update function, a couple of different custom functions using three different types of loops. Just key to if I press button one, two, and three on the keyboard, it'll call each of the functions. So fundamentally, let's first cover, one second, got to move Kitty out of the way. First, let's cover what a loop is. A loop, quite simply, is just a way to go through code over and over again. Um, it's a way to repeat doing something until some condition is met. Different types of loops have different types of conditions. Thanks, Kitty. You contributed. Alrighty. So the first one we're going to talk about is the for loop. And this is the setup for a for loop. So what this says is for int i equals zero, while i is less than some amount i plus plus. What does all this mean? What this means is we're going to do whatever code is in here between these two curlies, as long as i, which is just a number, is less than whatever we set it to be. So if I set this to be 3, and I'm going to comment this out and replace it with a debug. I'm going to go debug.log high. I just commented this out and put debug.log high here, and I'm going to hit play. We're going to hit 1, which is going to cause this to happen, and you'll see how many times this loop happens. We should see high happen a couple of times. So I'm just going to grab something, uh, we'll say this square, put my loop script on it, and then hit play. I'm going to hit 1. And then if we look in our console, high was called right here. High was called right here three times. And the reason for that is in our code, i is less than three. So the first time this loop happens, i is equal to zero. So we go through and i equals zero. Then i as zero is still less than three. So we're going to go through again. Each time we go through, we increase i by one. So the first time it starts off at zero. Okay, still true. We do the loop. Then we increase it by one. Okay, now one. Is one still less than three? Yes. Okay, we're going to go through again, so we'll print high a second time, and then we'll increase it by 1. So now it's 2. Third time is 2 less than 3. Yep. So we're going to print high out a third time, and then increase it by 1. So now it is equal to 3. Is 3 less than 3? No. Okay, we're done. We're going to just come down here and do whatever code's down here then. It just allows us to do something however many times we want it to do. So, and as another example, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in this line of code that just spawns a thing at a spawn point, and... We're going to make a new variable. I'll just make it public now for ease sake. Public float. And we'll just call this time, times to spawn. Instead of three, we're going to put times, times to spawn here. Times to spawn. There we go. And then we're going to come back to Unity. And now we just need to set our times to spawn. So let's say we want to spawn three times. I'm going to just choose our spawn points. That's just going to be this one up the top right here. And then we're going to choose a thing to spawn. So uh, I'm just going to create a circle and we shall make it yellow and i'm going to drag it down here so it is a prefab all that means is i can keep creating it over and over again and then i'm going to select my square and then give it our circle as our thing to spawn and since our thing to spawn is zero or times to spawn is zero nothing's going to spawn currently i'll hit play and nothing spawns however let's increase this let's put this to a four Mock four. And then, gotta replug these in. I think I did it in play mode. If you do change this in play mode, it doesn't get saved. And hit play. And then I'm gonna press one on the keyboard. And we've got four circles right here. They're all on top of each other, but you can see we got four of them right here. Alrighty, so next we are gonna move on to while loops. Alright, so while loops are simpler than for loops. Also, a quick shortcut for for loops. You can just type in for and hit tab twice, and it will fill in all this stuff for you. So then you just have to plug in the relevant ones to you. Just an easier way to type it. All right, while loops. While loops work just on a condition. They don't have any I or number or anything like that built in, so you have to create it yourself. So in this case, I made an integer called I, started it off at zero, and then increased it by one each time. And then we're gonna spawn uh, while I is less than times to spawn. So this is key to our second key. So it should do exactly the same thing. Kitty, why are you so fascinated by the mice? So I'm going to press 2. 
we also get four. I can even change this number to one, and then I'll press, and then if I press two, we should just get one. As you can see, <laughs> we just have one. Alrighty. Next, we're going to talk about for each loop. So these work a little bit different. These look through arrays. So we're going to have to modify our thing to spawn into a things to spawn. I'll just make a new variable for that. So I'll do public game object. And then again, the way you make an array is just two brackets. And then we'll call things, things to spawn. And this is going to have a couple things. And what we're going to do here is spawn a couple of times, depending on how many things we have to spawn. So we're going to go for each var item. So var is just a generic variable. In our case, we want a game object because we're looking for game objects in things to spawn. So this is for each item in things to spawn. So what this is, if we have to spawn, this code is going to happen three times. If we have one, it's going to happen once. And then here we will instantiate item because inside this array, array, we now care about the specific item. And then we'll spawn point dot position and spawn point dot rotation. Again, the way instantiation just works is you give it a thing to spawn, a location to spawn, and a rotation to spawn at. So here, depending on how many things we put on it, we should see multiple things spawn. So let's set that up. So now we've got our things to spawn. And let's give it a circle. Let's give it a two things. We're going to give it a circle, and then I'm going to just make a prefab variant that is a different color. Let's say it's a red one. And then we'll make another one that is like blue. And then we're going to go over to our square. And then I'll assign the red one to the second one. And then I'll assign the blue one to the third one. So we should see three items spawn if we press play and press three. So I'm going to press three. And now we've got three things. We've got a circle. This is the uh, yellow one. Then we've got the red one. And then we've got the blue one right here. So that is how loops work in a nutshell. The ones that I tend to use the most are four loops and for each loops, and of the two, I use for each way more. While loops are very rarely used, because anything you can do with them, it's generally better to just do with the for loop anyways, because you have more control over it due to the additional variables that come with it. Um, I hope you found this video interesting. Apologies for my kitty's appearance. He likes to be a little troublemaker. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Comment if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one.